Good morning. It is so great to be able to worship together. As you can see, the Cape and Ray students are leading us in worship this morning. So I just ask you to rise and join us in worship. God's invitation to each of us today is to come to the Father, right? All of us had, have had differing weeks, some filled with excitement and joy, uh, and others with pain and challenge, or a mix of it all. But we come to the Father this morning, worshiping a God who cares and loves us, and we're glad that you're here or watching online. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father from our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as God has welcomed you here today, let's take a moment to welcome those around us.
And as we continue into worship, we just want to open up in prayer. It says, here we are, Lord, your people, your church meeting together in your presence. We welcome each other and we welcome you. Make yourself known to us in new ways through our worship, our prayers, and our understanding of your word today. Amen. And as we, continue, as we continue to worship God, uh, we remember that God's love for us is indescribable, right? We can't fathom the depths of his love, but is marked by the cross. Please sing with us.
And Father, I thank you that we can look up at the cross and know that you loved us so much. And that we can lay all of our burdens down at the foot of our cross, knowing that you will carry them because you care. So thank you for leading us to the cross. We love you. Amen. So today is Cape and Ray students' last Sunday with us. The program at Thetis Island is coming to an end, uh, and they wanted to bless us one more time in leading worship. Uh, and I wanted to spend just a couple moments to talk with uh, a few of them and just highlight um, kind of one thing that, that has impressed, what God has impressed on them, what they've learned, uh, and maybe what they've appreciated about our church family and a word of encouragement for our church family. So just starting with, um, what do you feel God has been teaching you or impressing on you this year? Yeah, um, this is my second year at Cape Mary Harbor, um, so the big theme or my program is called the Leadership Training Program, um, and I've really learned leadership, but leadership in the context of servanthood, um, and servanthood, just being able to do what we're doing right now, serve you guys um, in the aspect of worship, or doing kids' talks, or insights, or even speak, and that's kind of been the, the big theme for me this year, and just what I've been able to kind of learn from you guys is servanthood, and how much of a blessing that is to not only the people I'm serving, but to myself as well. So that's probably big, the big theme for me this year. And Bubba, I, I know I speak for our whole congregation, but I, I've seen uh, you grow in your leadership uh, of, of bringing the students here and then how we've been interacting. It's been so neat to see you grow in these past two years. Joel, how about for you? Um, so we also all chose verses for the yearbook, like year-end verses, what could summarize our experiences. I chose Matthew 4.4 4, just to kind of explain what was going on for me uh, in my thoughts a lot of the year. Matthew 4.4 4 says, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every uh, word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. And for me, being in all those lectures, we have three lectures a day, not every day, but most days, and just so much time in the Word, so much time hearing about the Word, that sometimes I was frustrated that I would forget all the details and all the things you could know and all this knowledge um, and all the specifics, but that it's not about that and that what Matthew 4.4 4 says, it's sustenance, it's what we need, and it's not about knowing the details, it's about being in the Word because you need it and being in the Word because that's what keeps us alive um, and that's just the power that's behind the Word of God. So that's been so valuable, discovering that in the lectures and then being okay with not remembering everything we learned, but I would say still growing in a really special way. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you so much, not just filling in the front rows, but uh, just your presence and your energy that you bring on Sundays. Um, so we'll have to have some people move a little bit closer um, next week to fill that gap. Um, but what have you appreciated about being a part of this church family? Maybe I'll just start. Um, I've never been on a worship team, so that's pretty fun. And I'm not the most qualified, but it's just <laughs> a joy to just be a part, even though I haven't been in this church for too long. Just coming here, getting to know people, uh, serving already is just so valuable, I think. Yeah, the big thing I've appreciated about CRC is the fellowship. Um, and it's just such a blessing time and time again to come through those doors and just to see smiles and shake people's hands and have conversation. Um, you do such an, a good job. With, like It almost seems like you're intentionally seeking out us as Cape Ray students and other people that come in the church go through those doors to make them feel welcomed. And that's... I've. As a part of Cape and Ray, you go to different churches and you try out different churches. So I've tried out quite a few, and, and it's just something special about this church that it's almost highlighted to make people feel welcomed right off the bat. You see someone new, you go up to them. Um, and that's something I've just been so blessed by, by mm -hmm. CRC. And we've seen you students do that as well. <laughs> as you're being welcomed, you're also looking out to see and, and talk with people after the service. We do appreciate that. What is a word of encouragement that you can leave for our church family? Yeah, um, the growing young initiative at this church um, is something that I feel like you guys 
really, really just need to pursue more and more and more. It's so awesome to see you guys recognize that need for young people in your church. And I just want to encourage you guys to disciple these, these young ones. They might not be young adults like us yet, but soon enough they will be. And those will be the cornerstones almost of your church. Um, and I just want to encourage you to raise those up and to make time for them, disciple them, like spend one day with them, a couple hours with them, and just pour into them. Um, and that's going to be so fruitful, your church. And just recognizing that you guys can't do it. It has to be God. It has to be Christ, the Spirit moving in you. Um, there's a, a theme at Cape and Ray a saying, it's keep the main thing the main thing. Um, and that's Christ, and I just encourage you to keep him at your core, um, and that him at your core to just pour into others, especially the young ones. So, Something I've heard is that God's glory draws people to himself, and that people gather, and that's what I see here, and it's really encouraging. And also, like the other activities that, I, well, not many that we could be a part of. We went skating one time with a couple of you guys, and that was so much fun. And even though we couldn't be there for more of those, other than service, uh, church service gatherings, I think that's so so valuable and encourage you guys to invest into that because it's just sweet to see this community and also like a different context and get to know people. Mm -hmm. yeah, doing life together is so important. So we have Sunday mornings and it is critical to gather together on Sunday mornings, uh, but we want to do life together. And so whether that is an event or today we're doing guests who's coming to lunch and a bunch of people are going out to people's homes and, uh, and you know, getting to know each other. I think those are, those are ways that we get to do life together and, and encourage one another in our journeys. Um, so, uh, yeah, great words. Thanks so much. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, and if there's anyone that stays for a second term, you're welcome next year again. Um, but, uh, yeah, blessings on you guys. Uh, as you go back home or wherever you go, that you continue to, to be the light of Jesus uh, in your families and in your communities and in the churches that you're a part of. Let me pray for you guys. Father, we thank you so much uh, that we have seasons in our lives where we can experience something like uh, these students have, um, this intense uh, time learning about you, being in community, um, and it's so formative. And I pray that what they have learned, what these students have learned, um, that they can continue to grasp them and, and grow deeper in their knowledge of them. And as they go back home, that you show them how you can serve, how they can serve you in their context. And for each one of us, you know, the call to community is so strong. Um, we need one another. And I pray that that is something that we, we seek out, that we prioritize so that we can grow uh, more like you uh, together. So bless these students as they go. Um, let them be a light wherever they end up. Father, we pray this in your name. Amen. Awesome. We invite the kids to come up, and we have one more Cape and Ray-led kids talk. All right, you guys know the drill. You guys can come sit on the steps. Scooch over here. So you can see. Okay, so I'm Joel, if you guys don't know me yet, and today I'm going to talk about listening. So who would of you guys say you're a good listener? Anyone? No good listeners? Oh, I'm sorry, parents, but um, today we're going to test it a little bit. Can you guys hear something right now if everyone's really quiet? Can you guys hear that? Some good listeners, okay. The what? The nursery, okay. Anything else? Was there any, yeah? A guitar. There was a guitar out there. Can any of you guys tell me what song is being played on that guitar? Pretty hard, right? 
Why can't you guys hear it? Any? It's pretty far away, right? Why don't we ask Selma to come a little bit closer? She's playing a song, and then maybe we could try again when she's a bit closer. Can you guys hear the song now? Does anyone know what the song is? Yeah, over there. Jesus loves me, right? Well done. That's correct. Um, so, why did you guys hear it now? What was the difference between earlier and now? Yeah. Uh, she was yeah, she was closer. So that's what I kind of want to tell you guys today. Um, that it's similar with us and God. Selma isn't God, but if we are closer to God, we can hear better what he's trying to say to us. So if she's really, really far away, we can't really hear the guitar and then can't hear her voice, but if she comes a little bit closer, it's much easier to listen. Um, and the closer God is to us, the better we can hear him. So the question is now to you guys, how do we go closer to God? How does God come closer to us? What do you guys think? What can we do? Yeah. Pray. Pray, right. Really good. We can pray to God. Yeah. We can read the Bible, right. Really good, yeah. Any other ideas? Those are really important points. We could also serve others and like be kind, help them out, things like that. We could give give people money who need it, give people our time and our help, and all those things because God is like that. We can give because God wants to give. God is generous. We can help people because God wants to help us, and we can read the Bible because God introduces himself in the Bible. So all these things can help us come closer. And God is always singing his song, speaking to us, and the question is if we're listening and if we're close enough to hear him, actually. Um, and he always does that, never stops, and he's always seeking to come close to us. So that's a reminder for you guys. Um, if there's ways we can come close to God, we can better hear his voice. Um, and now someone's going to pray with us. I'm going to pray. Thank you, God, that you're always talking to us and we just have to open your word and we have insight in your thoughts. That's so cool. Please help us to listen, that we know what you want to tell us today because we need you. Thanks that you're with us now and forever. Amen. Okay, so now we can all stand up and give the blessing. Take our right arm. May the Lord be with you. Okay, you guys are good to go. And now please rise with us as we sing. As the Cape and Ray students set up, um, Jesus Christ is our firm foundation. We're going to rise. Uh, and we want to, uh, as we're leaning into the message later on, uh, to remember that Jesus works one at a time, but he's our firm foundation that no matter what happens in our life, uh, he will not change. So please sing with us.
Who? Our scripture passage is found in Luke 8, 42 to 49, and Psalm 139, 1 to 4. Please follow along in your Bible or up on the screen. Luke 8, 42 to 48. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go, she could go, she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Psalm 139, 1-4 says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. This is God's word to us. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Just want you to picture a zoom lens on a camera or on a projector. And when I do that, I ask myself, when is it that we need a zoom lens? It's when we want to focus in carefully on something in particular. A zoom lens gives us the opportunity to notice beauty, to notice detail, intricacies that we would not otherwise be able to see. I know there's some avid photographers in this group that know exactly what I'm talking about. So what happens when we commit to looking past the things that distract us and zoom in very carefully where it is God wants us to focus? Prepared to be challenged in this thinking as we explored this week's video in our one at a time series, Zoom Lens.
is we are called to make disciples of all nations. What does this look like in our homes, in our work, in our schools, or in our congregation? How can we be a difference maker? What does it look like to be a difference maker? And as we heard in the message, Jesus was a a one-person-at-a-time difference maker. Throughout Scripture, we learn so much from the beauty of him looking past the crowds, past the mayhem, past the things that you and I would typically be distracted by based on our own views and at times unintentional biases. What if we could learn to live life zooming in on one another as who God created us to be? God knows us deeply. He understands everything about us, even the things that we may not fully understand about ourselves. God sees past our outer appearances, past the stuff that distracts us from ourselves even. He knows our thoughts, feelings, motivations, and actions inside and out. Nothing is hidden from God's view. This knowledge comes from a place of deep love and care for each of us. Just like the woman who touched Jesus' garment to be healed, it is impossible to go unnoticed by God. Being loved by a God who created us means we are known. Each one of us seeks to be known. God sent his son as an example for us to connect with people one at a time, to make others feel known. If we are to look past what the world is pulling us towards and focus in on people, not even people, but one person at a time. Not only would our relationship with God be more intentional, more direct, but our relationship with one another would be that much richer. So let's commit. Let's commit one at a time to make someone, even one person, feel known. Take a moment. Think about who that might be. Or even pray that God reveals that person to you. And don't be afraid to make a connection. That may be hard for some of you, some of us, but God provides moments of connection. So even start by just saying their name when you see them. If God doesn't move in that one person's heart through those connections, he most certainly will move through yours. Please pray up with me. Heavenly Father, you have searched us and you know us. Before a word is on our tongues, you, Lord, know it completely. Please ignite in us the desire to focus on one another and love like you do. Please help us to know one another as your example. Please forgive us when in all our self-focused nature we are dismissive of others. Jesus, give us your eyes for the one. Give us your eyes to see people one at a time. Jesus, help us to see what you see to continue to build your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Please rise with us as we continue worship.
be seated. I wanted to share a few announcements with us here this morning. Uh, some of you know, but I was able to go to Toronto, Ontario, actually Burlington, uh, this week to the Christian Reformed Church head office in Canada. I was able to meet with a bunch of new pastors. It was a new pastors gathering to, to meet them and also meet a lot of the staff and ministry teams of the denomination. Um, I think we have some slides but Bill's working on that. Uh, it was neat. It was, west, it was west coast to east coast. One of the, the people that I got to connect a lot with was Brad Bootsma uh, from PEI. And so here are two islands from the opposite ends of Canada connecting, sharing a journey. Um, so you can see I'm holding the west and he's holding the east. Uh, it, was, it was really great. Uh, and I'm glad for the denomination for sending us there. Uh, today's guest who's coming to lunch, for those who have signed up for this, uh, you, you should know where you're going or if you're hosting. Uh, it'll be a great time of connecting, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, our golf challenge starts tomorrow evening. Uh, we still have a few spots available. If people are interested in coming and playing golf, you can come, to my, come talk to myself or to Tyler. And we have some more details. We're looking forward to building community on the golf course together. Uh, April 22nd, that's just one week and one day away, is our congregational meeting. Uh, this is a great time to hear what's happening in our church and our ministries. Uh, and if you have a question or concern or comment for any of our ministry teams or council or myself, uh, please communicate them with us prior to the meeting. Uh, we want to be able to have a good conversation uh, and to be, be able to be prepared for that meeting. So do come and talk to us so we can address those properly. Uh, for our tithes and offerings, thank you so much again for your continued support of our church family. Uh, our special offering today is our ministry to the seafarers, and, and we're hoping that this summer that Gary Ruzma from uh, Vancouver is going to come and, and talk with us uh, one of the Sundays. But yeah, here's a short video of the ministry that they do in Vancouver. Maybe we don't have the video. okay. We will post it on our Facebook page and you can watch it from there. Uh, but they do some amazing stuff. They, uh, there's people that come in on boats from all over the world and they've been on the ships for weeks and sometimes months. Uh, and the team there uh, has a really cool opportunity just to love on them and to serve on them. Uh, in the video it shows that they have a little store there for them to buy things because they don't have much time in port or are even allowed to leave port sometimes. And so the connection that they have is, is maybe the only connection they have in Vancouver with someone not on their boat. Uh, and so Gary and his team get to pray over them and ask how they can support them, uh, even providing Wi-Fi so they can connect with uh, their families. So continue to pray for their ministry and thank you for their support uh, in many different ways. I know there's, there's women here that create, uh, that knit toques uh, that they can give out uh, to the sailors because it's not the warmest on the ocean uh, and they really appreciate that. So thank you so much for your support. I'm gonna ask Annika to come forward are there. Perfect. And she's going to lead us in our congregational prayer. You can come up here, yeah. Sorry, I still have difficulty with stairs. Heavenly Father, we come to you to thank you that we can worship here this morning. We pray that you will inspire us by the reading of your word, by praying unto you and singing praises. Accept our worship and inspire us with your Holy Spirit to live for you each day. Thank you for the freedom we have to worship. Sweep over this world with your Holy Spirit so that many people may believe in you today and have their sins forgiven. We ask that you will be with missionaries, Adrienne and Roll, and other missionaries who spread your word. We thank you for the Bible League and for other organizations that are involved in spreading the gospel. Thank you for blessing the mission store in amazing ways. Be also with persecuted Christians today. Help them to be strong for you. Lord, we thank you for the food on our tables every day. We pray for countries and people who do not get enough food, not always because of their own doing, but because governments eat up the money and they live in drought areas such as Somalia, Venezuela, and Yemen. We take our food for granted but it is a gift from your fatherly hand. 
We pray for organizations that try to help countries produce more food or dig wells, Bless Food Grains Bank, World Renew, and the Gleaners and other organizations that are involved in this endeavor. Bless also people locally who try to help the homeless in our neighborhood. Lord, we thank you for education in this land. Many of us know how to read and write, but many in this world do not. Thank you for people who sponsor children around the world so they can go to school, have clothes to wear, and learn to read. Thank you also for the Bible and help us to read it daily because man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. We ask that you will bless especially Christian schools locally, but also globally. Bless also Christian institutions and Christian universities. And thank you so much that the Cape and Ray students could join us this past year in worship. And we pray that you will bless each one of them as they go home. And may they walk with you. We ask that you will be with the governments of this world. We pray especially for the wars to stop. We ask that aid may arrive in Gaza. And Lord, that you will change the hearts of those involved. There is so much pain, hunger, grief. Lives are ripped apart. Be with these areas and also places where there are floods, drought, volcanoes, and other areas of disaster. May many people come to their help. We pray for this congregation, Lord. We ask for comfort for those who are grieving loss of loved ones, whether that be recently or a while ago. Be with the Barron's family and also Kristen Vischer's family in their grief. May you give them comfort and peace, and may we be a kind, compassion, and caring church for them. We pray for those who are undergoing medical treatment. So bless Frank Grunewald, Ida Van Boven, Marianne Wickerink, Jenny, and Danielle's mom, and, and sustain them, be near to them, and also others. We ask that you will help Alice Bazine and Betty Verwolf to feel at home in their new home, as they are having difficulty with that. Thank you for doctors and nurses and good medical care, even though we have to wait for a while. But we thank you for good medical care. We thank you for the good news about Marianne, as the doctors are amazed at her results. Give strength to those who are experiencing pain every day, and also those who have mobility issues. Then there are marital conflicts, family issues, and also loneliness or people living alone, and also issues of addiction. Help us all to be a caring for one another deeply. Lord, thank you for those who are working at preschool, leaders of Sunday school, GEMS, cadets, youth group, adult groups, and coffee break. Thank you so much for the growth in coffee break. Help us to be a loving sister to those who attend. Give wisdom to the council of our church, and may people come forward to serve in the vacant spots. Bless Pastor Dan in our midst. Give him wisdom and strength from day to day. Thank you for Pastor Kevin and his wife, and keep them safe on their trip, and may they arrive in Medicine Hat in due time. Lord, fill our hearts with your love, joy, and peace. May we serve you this coming week in whatever task you have prepared for us. May we trust in you always. Thank you for hearing our prayers, and you always, always answer our prayers. Maybe not in the way we want it, but in the way that is best for us, even if we don't understand it or like your answers. Help us to know that you love us more than our earthly parents ever did, and you answer our prayers in the way that is best for us. Thank you, Lord, for your love and faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please rise, and before we sing one last song, uh, receive this blessing. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us, and may the way of God direct us. And may the love of God go with us this day and forever, as step by step we look to impact one person at a time.
at a time. Amen.